John, tell me about the uh, standards framework you recommend for, well, for, for cybersecurity. So I think, first of all, there, there is already great best practice out there. It doesn't matter whether you're talking of the NIST frameworks or you're talking to the work of INISA. The issue is you can't have a thousand different best practices. You can't have a thousand standards. So our objective is to get NIST and ANISA to combine their effort to one broadly, globally accepted framework. It has to be more than a framework. You have to build into that what does good look like. So what are the certification standards? There are many great certification bodies around the world. Whether you're looking at common criteria or CSA or TUV, then use those standards bodies to take the agreed framework, turn them into a certification framework. Europe is looking for this for IoT anyhow, so I think there's models out there, there's techniques out there, we just need the will to go and make it happen. So you mentioned IoT, we're also talking about 5G, how do we get from where we are today to a global standard for cyber security? Well the, the technology is not going to wait on policy makers or regulators, the technology is going to go on. And what will happen is you'll end up getting a de facto standard by basically first mover advantage. Because there are already you know, hundreds of millions of IoT devices around the world. They're not going to wait to do automation of their factory or their smart city on the basis of some standard that may or may not be agreed. So I think we need to recognize the technology is going regardless. And therefore what we need to be able to do is to have an evolution plan with combined bodies around the world to come up with generations of standards. I guess much like they've done really in the airline industry. The airline industry is not using version one of an aviation standard. They're probably on version 27 in terms of that. And I think we can take some lessons from other industries like aviation. Well, this morning's uh, discussion, GDPR was mentioned quite a bit yeah. as an example of how a coalition can come together and agree on a standard. How do you see that type of framework applying to 5G and IoT? Well, it's already beginning to happen because we are extending the role of ANISA in Europe. They are focusing on certification starting with IoT. And therefore, they will begin to look at what, are, what the frameworks are now existing in existing countries within Europe, the member states, and they will amalg that, amalgamate that into one overall standard. Then they will try and get that uh, agreed by the 27 countries of Europe post the Brexit uh, deal. And my belief is most will sign up to that. And I think that, by definition, will then become the de facto standard. We just hope America can play a role in that. Well, we're here at the grand opening of uh, Huawei's um, European Cybersecurity Center for Transparency. Why should people care about it? And who are you really uh, building the center for? Well, let's take away the labor of things like 5G. Um, it wasn't many years ago that we began to talk about robotics or artificial intelligence or big data. We've got President Trump talking of 6G and of course there will be a 6G in some shape or form. So think about the transparency centers, because we've got more than one, as uh, forums to bring people together to think about what, how can I write a policy framework on when I don't know all the use cases on technology. How can I think about the standards frameworks or the certification frameworks? Because I can't keep reinventing the wheel on standards and certification. And the Transparency Centre brings people together. It actually shows them what the technology does rather than them thinking they understand what the technology is. And then you can have more of a combined policy debate, a more legal debate and an operator debate in one environment. And we see that as a very positive step forward. Final question, how is this centre different from say the UK center or the Bond center or even the center in China? So this center here has the three arms in terms of verification, uh, you know, a hub and a collaboration center. Where well, the center in the UK is really, we use that as a, an extension of R&D. They do nothing but deep dive. You know, they're people that look drawn because they're looking at millions of lines of code and looking for you know all kinds of the minutest thing that could cause an issue and they do find issues and they find ways that we can do things and that's what the UK government is saying to us we find things you must fix them this center here isn't an extension of R&D it's more at the tell me about policy tell me about your generic requirements of a customer if you're going to use 5G because we don't know how customers will use 5G let's talk about your use case let's talk about your existing infrastructure how do we mold old world and new world for you as an operator where you can make more money? Because if customers don't make money, they can't buy future technology.